Once we get in the house, Carl heads, heads straight for the stairs. Carl. You guys back? How'd it go? Oh no, <laughs> I forgot about him. Raven. Not now. Can you disappear? <laughs> Should have went home, bud. Raven's voice calls from upstairs. Well, we didn't drive him home. We didn't plan this very well. Ray, something's wrong. Huh? What's wrong? Oh, I don't answer as I walk up to the stairs. Carl just disappeared down. Oh, he's going, he went down. Oh, those stairs. Oh. Once I get there, he's already gone. I make my way down the stairs, and it's at that point that my headache starts to make a comeback. Carl? He's not in the basement either, but I can see the yellow light glowing from the crawl space. Something... I don't know what it is, but something feels incredibly wrong right now. This is strange music for this situation, I feel like. Well, now we have that, that like, lower tone seeping into this music. Yeah. I just feel like that one instrument is a little too, like, chipper. This yeah, one. Th this one. This, uh, this, oh, this instrument's a little too chipper a, for the tone um, of the sound of what we're trying to do right now. What the fuck's that called? It's like a tin drum or something. No, it's like a, um... Mira. Oh my gosh. No, uh, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's the one that's made of little, uh, mar marimba. A marimba? Yeah, my high school had a, had a, a uh, <laughs> world-class marimba player. I've been listening to a lot of Tom Waits lately. Oh, with the marimba. It's, it's marimba, not a marimba. <laughs> it's woody, it's all, it's underutilized in rock um, yeah, music. No, see, yes, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh. It's all skeletons in it! <laughs> Why is it all skeletons? <laughs> we should have spurged for the full-size Marumba. <laughs> he's a lot- he's a lot of xylophone on last week. <laughs> I watched this video so many fucking times, the actual skit part is like 40 seconds long. <laughs> like, it's so- it, it it's so- I can't even explain why it's so entertaining, but I've watched it so many fucking times. Well, I will say that Marumba is uh, underutilized uh, in rock music. Under- underutilized in rock Very music. Very much, very much so. <laughs> the only video I've watched more by Worthy Kids is Wire, which is absurdly good. Oh my the, gosh. The clown ninjas. All the music's so good. <laughs> so, so sorry for everyone that doesn't yeah, know what's I know, happening yeah, right I'm now. Yeah, I'm so sorry, everyone. Watch every Worthy Kids video. It does not really met jive with the um, the tone yeah, that no, we have right off, now. Yeah, I know. This is very off, 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 uh, I'll, I'll off go route. Back, I'll go back a second. Yeah, He's sorry. not in the basement either, but I can see the yellowing light gl glowing from the, the crawl space. <laughs> Something, I don't know what it is, but something feels incredibly wrong right now. Buzzing fills my head, the ground feeling unsteady, as if I'm walking on sand. Once I find Kyle, we're both going to the hospital. I stumble down to the crawl space, and again, Carl's not there. I'm greeted with the familiar row of tubs, but a stack of them have been pulled away from the wall. Carl. Carl, what? I fall silent because ahead of me is a hole. About three feet high and two feet wide. What the hell? Carl? What? Is there like an old timey fucking like smuggling tunnel in this mansion? Is that why the tub is that why the tubs kept moving? Because like they kept taking like the, the top two or whatever, and that's where the old stuff was in, but like the full tower of them was like hiding like a fucking like shining hole. Not shining. Uh uh you have, oh my gosh, not the no, you're prison about... movie. Shawshank, yeah, Shawshank hole. A Shawshank hole. Uh I don't know. Are the Pete? remains of John B. Gay in the hole? <laughs> uh I don't know, Keith. I'm where the not fuck sure. does the tunnel go? What the hell? Carl? Plaster covers the tarp around it, as if the wall had been bashed violently to create the hole. That is like a Shawshank hole. Did Carl go through it? Getting on my paws and knees, I look into it, but the darkness is inky and so black I swear I can touch it. As I crawl forward, my mind gives a violent jolt and I arch my ba head back, teeth bared as my face spasms, and then I fall. And it feels like I fall forever. What the fuck? Hey, Raven? I'm still really thrown off <laughs> by the music. 
Can you be the adult in this situation? There, it's gone. Good. Forever underutilized now. Wind blows pleasantly through my fur, seeping underneath and cooling my sweating skin. The smells of the desert, sagebrush and dirt, overwhelm my senses. Everything is black around me, but there are a million stars above me. I hear the smattering of small feet running circles around my body, snuffling of noses up against my sides and neck. Mixed into the sounds are the wild of, of the sounds of the wild are words, languages I don't understand, chanting and singing, the sounds of dancing. Then another language. I hear a word or two that I learned from Leo years ago. And then my own language. And above it all, a maniacal cackling. One that builds and fades before choking off into a sob. The first feeling I have is one of confusion. Me too. I feel stiff and cold and I'm lying back on, I'm lying back on something hard. I expect to see stars above me, and I open my eyes, but instead all I see is blackness. Panic starts to well up inside me. My breathing quickens, and though it's hard and painful, I manage to pull myself up into a sitting position. That's when I see a gentle glow coming from an opening about 30, fi 30 feet away from me. Where am I? The last thing I remember was the lake. Wait, no. Carl's house is the last thing I remember. We went back to his house after the lake. Did I fall asleep in his house somewhere? I feel around on the floor with my hands and can feel wood underneath me. It creaks as I shift around. Carl? My voice comes out hard and crackly. I have to lick my lips several times to keep them from sticking together. I call out again but more softly this time, because now I'm starting to wonder if someone else brought me here. When I don't hear anything, I start to crawl forward, towards the light. My head throbs a little, and there's a coppery taste in my mouth. Probing my tongue around, I taste the sour bites along my cheeks. I start to run through the list of things that could have happened. I was in Carl's basement, then I just sort of seized up. Did something... Did someone hit me over the head? I stop crawling and start moving my hands around my body and over my head. No. No sign of any injuries. Aside from the cheek bites, it's really just the inside of my head... The inside of my head that, that hurts. While I do this, lucidity starts to return in waves, as if a dam had, has broken and all of my senses are falling back into place. At the same time, the panic starts to return, as I realize how much this doesn't make sense. Someone had to have brought me here, wherever here is. I start crawling again, trying to keep my panic under control. I'm almost to the glow, but it's weird because it's coming from the ground. As I get closer, I hear a soft brushing behind my head. I tense and look over my shoulder. I'm greeted by the sight of inky blackness, so dark that it almost feels alive, and I get the impression of a giant mouth opening in front of my face. The imagery gives me a jolt and I lunge forward, deciding to get up on my feet so I can move fast. And then I'm falling, but not for long. My senses are full of light now, and I throw my hands forward to catch myself, but I keep falling, and the split second before I hit, I realize there's a ladder. I instinctively grab at it, but my head hits the rungs first, and I flip forward before landing on my feet. It happens on weak ankles, though, and my right foot gives out, and my ankle rolls. I hear a series of pops before the rest of my body hits the floor. I lay there for a moment, the sudden noise and violence of the fall stunning me. In my stupor, I feel a cold spiderweb of, of electricity pulsing from my ankle, and that's what spurs me to move. I pull myself into a sitting position to clutch at it. Fuck. The pain isn't really bad, 
But something is definitely wrong, and I'm not sure if I can just walk it off. That's why I notice my surroundings. A long hallway stretches out to either side of me, lit by decorative chandeliers. Looking up, I see that I've fallen down a, a drop-down ladder from a small square in the ceiling. Uh, what the fuck? The moment he stood up, he fell out of the attic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were in the crawl space. Not now. So is there a house underneath their house? Uh, That would be weird. I I just that, imagined that, that hole he... that Carl went into that was covered by the tarp. Is it an entryway to another fucking house God, under the ground? That would be weirder. I was thinking that he just got moved to the attic, but maybe how, there's how, another how, house. How would, I mean, I think the someone pulling a limp body up into an attic space would be pretty difficult. Some shit's going down one way or another. Neither of these are normal explanations. No. What the hell? I look back down at my ankle. I wiggle it around and immediately feel another pulse of electricity that feels much more painful this time around. I grit my teeth as I spread my hands out against the wall behind me, pushing myself up slowly, making sure not to put any weight on my injured ankle. As I'm doing this, I hear a soft clopping sound coming from my right. At the end of the hall, it looks like it takes a sharp right, and it sounds like the noises are coming from that turn. My throat tightens, and I press myself harder up against the wall. I see a shadow slide up the carpet at the end of the hallway, and I hold my breath. The shadow stops, too, and I feel the feeling that... I get the feeling that whatever it is might be holding its own breath. Finally, the tension gets to me, and I clear my throat nervously. Carl? Chase? Carl? That kills people, Carl. I let my- sorry. I let out a gasp of relief and almost sagged down the wall. More clopping of footsteps and Carl appears around the corner. His eyes are wide and his nostrils flare. He stumbles up to me, his hands clasped together nervously. Holy shit, dude. It's so fucking good to see you. I press up harder against the wall, taking more weight off my foot. What the hell is going on? I, I, I don't know. I just woke up. You okay? He looks at me, then down at my foot. Are you hurt? I gesture up at the ladder. I fell down that thing. Carl looks up at the ladder and the dark hole it leads up to. What were you doing up there? I don't know, I just woke up in the dark and I tried to crawl out. Shit. Carl bends down to look at my ankle, which is clearly starting to swell. Can you walk? I think so. Kind of. He stands back and looks around. Chase, I don't know what's going on. I just woke up in a bedroom up the hall like 20 minutes ago. Is this... Is this not part of your house? Carl lets out a breathy, incredulous laugh. No, definitely not. I was trying to find a window, but I can't. Because <laughs> we're underground. <laughs> what the fuck? Maybe we're in a basement or something? The last thing I remember is your crawl space. Why would they have an attic in a basement? Carl! <laughs> <laughs> I look back up at the dark hole in the ceiling. Maybe it's not an attic. Chase... I'm freaking out. And it shows, too. His breathing is picking up, his wide nostrils flaring again. I reach out and put a hand on his shoulder, giving some reassuring squeezes. No. No, it's okay. Maybe we got really high or drunk or something. What's the last thing you remember? Carl starts clicking his fingers together again, looking away up the hall. Um, um, the lake... Yeah. I remember we went back to your house, then down to the basement, and then... Carl frowns. I don't remember. I watch him carefully. But then I remember looking behind the plastic bins and there was this... Help! We both jump as the scream comes from right down the hall. Carl and I both look at each other wide-eyed. What the hell? Hello? Is someone out there? <laughs> that, that's Raven. <laughs> Oops. I wonder. So, it sounds like Raven. 
That's so Raven. Are you right? Always, always I, death screeching. Totally forgot about Raven, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck has Raven been? I was like, Raven, you traitor. You knocked me out. <laughs> oh, whoa. Raven's the villain after all. <laughs> and he has to be with that haircut. <laughs> Told you I was emo, guys. Carl starts to hesitantly walk up the hallway, and I move to follow, and immediately regret it as I put weight on my ankle. It's completely stiff now, and pain shoots up into my shin like lightning. My gasping causes Carl to turn around in confusion. Then, it, then his eyes light up when he sees my leg. Aw, oh, shit. Here. He reaches out, and I wrap an arm around his neck. He is sturdy and strong, easy to lean against and I sigh with relief as I take the weight off my injured ankle. Somebody? We hobble our way down the hall, following the sound of Raven's panicked voice. We take a left at the end of the hall, and are confronted with an almost identical, almost identical hall to the last. That's when I start to smell smoke. Do you smell that? Carl puts his nose up. Something burning? Help me! Raven's just lighting incense. He <laughs> found some patchouli. He's burning sage because yeah. it's spooky here. <laughs> yeah, and he accidentally lights stuff on fire because he's trying to burn sage. Actually, sorry, side note, this lady I work with had the the fire department show up at her house because she was trying to light sage and she made all of her fire alarms go off in her house and it was like in the early, early morning so she woke up her entire household <laughs> and they, the fire alarms like they were like signaled to actually call like the fire department so she was like late for work that day because she had a bunch of people show up to her house and try to like solve her her house being on fire without it actually being on fire because she was sitting in the bathtub lighting the stage <laughs> what a mess yeah, no, it was, it was a fun story I almost jump again as the sound comes from right on our left, the only door on the left side of the hallway. We both look at the door for a moment, Carl's ears perked, up, perked straight up, and we both jump again as the door shakes from several heavy bashes that rattle the frame. Help! The cry is mournful, like he's given up. Raven? The shaking and pounding stops. Carl? Carl! The voice instantly turns hopeful, and the voice grows muffled, as if Raven is pressing his muzzle right against the door. Get him out, guys! Get him out! I'm... I I'm stuck! The door won't open, and there's a there's a fire! What? There's a fire, Chase! Open the door! <laughs> Chase, there's, there's something burning on the stove or something. I can't see it. Me and Carl look at each other in bewilderment. Use your horns, Carl! Guys? It's getting really smoky in here, I can't really see anything. Oh no. He gives a cough. And it's really hard to breathe. Alright, hold on a sec, man, we'll get you out. Carl shifts me to the wall so I can lean against it, and then tries the doorknob. The knob barely turns, clearly locked. Shit. Yeah, it's locked. It's getting really hot in here. If it wasn't locked, he'd be out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guys. Well, it could be locked on that side. That's true. Hold on. Carl shoves his shoulder against the, the door. It gives a few creaks, but otherwise stays solid. Please, help! His plaintive whimpering is barely audible through the thick wood. What kind of lock is it? Maybe we could pick it? No. Chase. Carl studies the knob. I don't think a paperclip's gonna work. I lean in to look and find myself staring at an old-fashioned keyhole. The hell? Raven, can't you unlock it from that side? No, there's nothing there. Guys, I can't breathe. His voice is getting desperate again. There's no other way out? No other doors in Guys, there? Guys, he would have done that already. Raven doesn't answer, and Carl and I both wait for a good ten seconds. Oh, no. Raven? Ah! <laughs> oh, no. We both jump for the third time before Carl presses his face up to the door. Raven! Raven, what happened? For a few seconds, all oh, we hear is no. coughs. Then Raven's voice is lower, up against the bottom of the door as if he's laying down. Something. Something in the smoke. Help. What? What's in the smoke? Guys. 
Stop asking questions. Just fucking uh. you need, do the ram headbutt. Like we know where the scene's going, right? My mind flashes back to what I heard in the attic. Something I can't see. Open the door. Or even stop talking. <laughs> Fuck. All right, man, stand back. I don't know if he's talking to me or Raven, but I take a step back anyway. <laughs> Chase. Carl takes a few steps back, then throws his body forward, smashing up against the door. It shudders a little bit, and I hear a crack or two, but otherwise there's no change. He tries it again with the same result. Carl, I don't think that's gonna work. Carl doesn't say anything, instead backing up until his back touches the opposite wall. He takes a deep breath and charges forward, his head down this time. Instinctively, I close my eyes, imagining Carl snapping his neck right in front of me. He's built for this, guys. He's built for <laughs> this. The impact is much louder this time, and it's accompanied by a crunch. When I open my eyes, it's not Carl's neck that's broken, but rather the wooden door. Have you seen those guys do that? They're, yeah. They're so, their necks are, are so strong. That's how I got through a car crash. We set this up. Yes. Carl's head was completely busted, has completely busted through the door so that his head is poking in on the other side. I stare, expecting to see tendrils of black smoke snaking out of the broken door, but there's nothing. Carl sets his hands on either side of the door, apparently taking a look around. Raven, you okay? I woke up to Carl's side to put a hand on his back. Carl, what is it? Is there a fire? Carl braces himself up against the door before pushing back, yanking his head out of the opening. With like a pop, like <laughs> he pops his head back out. He comes up with a bunch of wooden splinters clinging to his head fur and beard and sweatshirt. Nothing. Sweatshirt? That's not a sweatshirt. I'm like, he's not wearing a sweatshirt. Not unless you, you're changing... Did you forget that I, he's I think, wearing I think this? They forgot I think he's they wearing forgot. This, he, yeah. no, he normally wears a sweatshirt, but he's dressed like this. It's okay. It happens. Nothing. I dug down and looked through the opening as well, taking care to keep weight off my injured foot. I'm greeted with the sight of a bright lit dining room and kitchen, but it's clear. No smoke in sight. It was... It was completely bl black in here a second ago. I look down at the trembling voice of Raven before me and see the husky curled up, his head poking out from his fetal position. Hey, Chase. Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know what happened. There was smoke everywhere. It's like when you opened the door, it all got sucked out. I sniff, and now I can't even get a whiff of smoke aside from the residual taste I still have of it in the back of my throat. I hear a click next to my head, and look over to see the doorknob twist. I pull my head out of the hole, and Carl pulls the door open. Are you kidding me? It, it was locked, right? It was definitely locked. Raven gets up, brushing shaky hands down his shirt. You okay, man? Yeah, yeah, just thought I was gonna die for a second. <laughs> I watch as Raven struggles to keep his ears perked. What happened? Raven takes a deep breath. I don't, I don't know. I just woke up in here and smoke just started coming out from the stove or oven or something. You said you saw something? Yeah, something in the smoke. It looked like arms or something. Carl and I look at each other. But it, it might have just been the smoke. I look around the room, scanning it for any sign of the black smoke that Raven was so adamant about having seen. I don't think he was just seeing things, because I'm pretty sure I hadn't imagined the smell. I, I, I promise I'm not lying. It's just... It's just what I saw. I think the bigger issue here is that we're here at all. I mean, where the hell is here? I spread my hands out, giving an incredulous laugh. I... I thought maybe it was just another part of your house? Raven looks at Carl. I mean, I went downstairs after you guys and I found this hole? Then everything went dark. Carl looks down. Same here, I followed Carl. We both look at Carl, but he doesn't say anything, instead just moving past Raven into the large kitchen next to the dining room. It's like a saw two? Saw three? 
think Saw 3. When they all, all the people wake up and they're in the horror house. Oh, it's Saw 2, yeah. And, saw, and they're all trying to figure out like, why they're there. That's and the like, best Saw, probably. And they're all sitting there trying to be like, this happened, and then and now I'm here. And they're yeah. like, oh, well, I was doing this, and now I'm here. And they're just trying to figure out. That wasn't the best Saw. The first two are the best ones, and the second one's probably better than the first one. And they get much worse after that. I don't know if I like the house one very much. That the the the. I like the twist. That's fun. I like the needle pit. <laughs> a, it, it introduces dynamics between characters for once, but also not in the really dumb way that happens later. I think the first the sequels movie get progressively is great so much as a standalone worse. movie, and I think it almost should be considered a separate thing from everything else. But the second, the second one introduces that that girl character, and I don't like her at all. Um, yeah, well, she's made name. worse by the sequels. Yeah, but there, there's a couple of them that have really good traps, and I that's what I look at the most. And I think Saw 2 had weak sauce traps. But the first one on its own, I think, is a good standalone movie, because I think it really introduces uh, a concept that was unique at the time. But, and then they make a bunch of shitty sequels that keep calling you back out. to that one and being like, and actually, this is what happened. And they keep retconning and changing yeah, the first movie yeah. forever. And now the, the, like, the new one came out, and it has like... Chris Rock in it, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a uh, time think, for Chris Rock. I think Rock. Jigsaw and Spirals are both sequels to Saw that aren't called Saw. Yeah, no, Jigsaw they're, like, made me they're really like, angry. They're like, they're like, seven Saws is enough. We gotta stop. We gotta call them something else now. I stopped at like four or five. I I will I will admit that I've seen all of them except for the last one because I I do have a special place in my heart for the Saw movies. It was the only <laughs> movies I snuck into in my whole life. Because wow. I was not legally old enough to watch wow. them when they came out. And You're I... Stephanie the Criminal. I bought tickets for another movie, so I did pay the theater. I just walked into the different theater. That was, like, the only time I ever mm-hmm. did anything bad. Because I'm a good kid. Oh, no. But uh, I just... It's I hard to do now because movies. of the way the seats are all, like, assigned. Yeah, no, I've never... You can't get away with that anymore. I, I kind of forgot about that. Kind of. You just have to watch... Uh, a movie no one's watching. No, it's definitely <laughs> happened. I've had people walk into movies while I've been watching them. I'm like, you didn't buy a ticket to this movie. <laughs> Not that I care. I, I used to buy one ticket and then watch three movies. See, you're more of a delinquent than I am. You, yeah. you stole movies. I at least bought it one ticket. It literally cost them movie. nothing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They'll I know. be fine. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. You, you probably didn't even buy a popcorn. No. Yeah. I, I, that's the bigger crime. You're killing movie that's my theaters. That's bigger kid. crime. I, uh,. Is I would I would sneak drinks in and stuff like that. I had my uh, my camera bag. I would I would fill with snacks, oh. and there wasn't a camera inside. Well, honestly, you know, thirteen dollars for a popcorn guy. No, it's fucked up. <laughs> I, can, it's I, like, I can't afford that. It's like when we went to the zoo and they, they we, there was eight dollar water. And it's like motherfucker. I don't care if it's in a metal can. What the hell? <laughs> it's like you got me over a barrel because it's hot out. Yeah, <laughs> and I need water. Or I'll You're lucky die. I need to survive. Ugh. Oh, here's eight bucks. Thanks. Anyway, back to trying to survive this. <laughs> I hobble after him, then reach out to lean against the counter. I try to gather my thoughts. Everything still feels dreamlike, surreal. And my thoughts are sluggish. Carl, do you have any idea what happened? I mean, that hole. Did you go there too? Carl sets his hands on his hips, eyes wandering around the room. Honestly, I can't remember anything that happened after the lake, man. Raven casts a sidelong look at me before moving next to Carl. Well, maybe if you if maybe it'll just take a second before you can remember. It I was really confused when I woke up there. I I was curled up over there on that counter. Well that's that's a really weird place to wake up. Yes. On a counter. They were all posed in positions that are likely to roll their ankle, just to see which one would fall for it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Chase was the winner. Ding, ding, ding. Raven points to a marble top counter, under a row of a dozen pans hanging from a fixture attached to the ceiling. We stand there in silence as, I imagine, we individually absorb the situation we're in. Carl. Are you sure this isn't some extension of your house? Maybe something that leads out of the crawl space? The ram laughs, but it definitely isn't genuine. Dude, I think I'd known if this was some part of my house. Or would you? Unless my parents have just been building this secret kitchen underground for who knows how long. I glance at the lighting, which is definitely electric. Then over at, over at what looks like an electric stove... 
While everything sort of looks old-fashioned, there was a mixture of modernity to it as well. Where else could we be? Raven and I remember going to the crawl space and then losing consciousness after we found that hole. Which is where you went, Carl. Carl finally does turn to me at that point, his brow furrowed. Do you think I had something to do with this? Even though I was implying that he might know more, Carl's sudden jump to being defensive catches me by surprise. No. I just wonder if you might have any ideas since it's your house, you know? Carl laughs again. I'm struck by the fullness of it. Usually when Carl laughed, it was crackly and half-hearted. Now it's loud and a little abrasive. Is this like a misery? He's going to keep us down here? <laughs> just break our ankles. I think I just waited in the shadows and drugged you all up with acid or some shit. I don't respond, just watching Carl as he stares back at me, breathing hard. Raven coughs loudly. Hey, guys, let's calm down. You know, I'm kind of hungry. Uh, why don't we make some food? Raven, it's not the time <laughs> at all. But he doesn't like conflict. Obviously. He's a dog. <laughs> But you, you have to figure out how to get out. Like, it's not the time to make food. <laughs> he would have been the worst person to have at the lake. Yeah, no. He, he would have been cringe. He's already cringe. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to break Carl out of his stare down with me as he looks over at Raven and huffs out one of his more charismatic chuckles. Characteristic chuckles. <laughs> really, Raven? Yeah. That always makes me feel better. See, the only reason I don't think that... That uh, Carl's playing misery with us and is trying to keep us trapped down here is because because uh, Raven's down here. I don't think he would want Raven down no. here in, in his house, I and mean, then he'd want him and I, him no, and Chase. No, I don't think Carl's like, and now we'll be together forever or anything. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't want to bring Raven down there for that. I think I think there's something's fucking wrong with this town and his house, like just all at once, just not no. Also, something supernatural happened. <laughs> like we can't just. We have to, like, very much remember, like, the rules changed. <laughs> like, whatever we thought, like, we, we were wondering what horror there might be and what, like, actual, like, what might be in store. And it's like, one way or another, it's not just Carl lost his mind and did some shit. Like, there was a pretend, there was, like, a, a weird pretend fire that everyone collectively observed in some way. And Raven thinks he saw something. And then it was just gone. Like... Something really fucking weird is happening here. <laughs> Raven starts opening cupboards, but each one is empty. Yeah, Raven, what do you think? <laughs> Carl turns back to me, frowning. Sorry, Chase. I'm just fucking freaked out, too. Thing is, I don't think we're in my house anymore. He chuckles again. I mean, are we even an echo? What what time is it, anyway? Oh, maybe we time traveled. Maybe. So it is. It is electric stove, so no. I reach oh my. in my pocket to check my phone, and that's when I remember I have a fucking phone. I almost jump with the realization and shove a hand in my pocket to pull it out. Why didn't I think of that before? What? Phone. <laughs> phone. Oh, look at his face. Oh, he's not in a good mood. He's not in a good mood right oh, now. Oh, I can't see it. Like I can barely see his face from my angle. Does it show up more oh. if you? Does it show up more if you lean further to your right? Yeah. Because if I if I lean further to my left on an off angle with the monitor, it gets brighter. No. His face does. It's weird. I just never. Uh, he is extremely. His mouth slightly open. And he's very wide eyed. I, has that been there he, the entire time? I, I don't think I've seen it before, but also oftentimes there's stuff on the screen. That is true. But like he is. That's one way of showing that he is. Ex he is extremely afraid right now. It's not a good Chase face. Is, it's cute. He's a cute little <laughs> face. Otters are really, adorable. He's not, he's a, <laughs> how dare you? That Adorable <laughs> is a slur. <laughs> yeah, whenever someone calls me adorable, I just punch him right in the face. <laughs> K.O. I pull it out excitedly and hit the button to turn the screen on. And I'm met with a black screen. My phone's dead. Are you kidding me? I hold the power button down, but nothing happens. I look up to see Raven and Carl getting similar results. Shaking hit hit Raven shaking his as if that's going to help. Oh, he's great. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he's an idiot, I love him. Carl shakes his head. 
Were we out that long? This is crazy. I press a hand to my face for a moment. The idea that this could still be some sort of dream coming to mind. That's what I associate with dreams, is being in intense pain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think like, a few hints. being able to feel pain is like yeah. the antithesis of being in a dream, supposedly. I remember after taking an overnight job back when I was a freshman, and how that had fucked up my, my sleeping schedule. That, in turn, gave me all kinds of fucked up realistic dreams. Sleep paralysis plagued me to the ends of my wits, and I remember one time I, I thought I'd never be able to get up. I was stuck in bed, but each time I sat up and thought it was over, I'd end, end up sort of waking up again, still lying down, stuck in my paralysis. <clears throat> dreams within dreams within dreams. No food either. Thanks, Raven. <laughs> my scattered thoughts collect. <laughs> fucking character. My scattered thoughts collect together long enough for me to decide on the next course of action we should take. Alright, this is stupid. We should go and look around. Uh, we'll, we'll find the way out eventually. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do that. I looked around a little, but didn't find anything. We need to look up, in order to find out Raven's fate, we have to, we have to look up this game on, on doesthedogdie.com. <laughs> no, don't spoil it. Can you pet the dog, though? Can you pet the dog? <laughs> but it's just for Raven. <laughs> Hey man, that that's a that's discriminatory. Like you're, you know, dogs got prejudices against them. You can't pet dogs without their consent. All right. But they want it, <laughs> so it's very easy to achieve consent. I grab I grip the counter a little more <laughs> tightly as I feel a slight wave of dizziness come over me, making everything feel a little less real. But the pain that's shooting up my ankle is very real, and just a glance down at the ever growing swelling confirms it. Can we, like, tie this up? Oh no, Carl, you're gonna have to take off your shirt. <laughs> oh no, you have to take your tie off, Carl. The suspicion that we'd somehow been drugged grows, but I don't want to upset Carl again, so I don't mention it. What if he said exactly what happened if he did drug us with acid, and this is mm -hmm. exactly what's happening? He's trying to gaslight us by saying the exact thing that we were suspecting this whole time. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's just stick this together and go. We'll find a way out. Ah, I am hungry. We can eat when we get out. There's no food here anyway. Just this hunk of meat. <laughs> I'm a problem. <laughs> You're a problem. <laughs> I turn. <laughs> just the mo just the moment of clarity. <laughs> I turn, and even though I. Even though I do it as lightly as possible, the moment I set my right foot down feels like a hundred needles press into my ankle. Oh, fuck. Carl's at my side instantly, reaching out a hand to steady me. Dude, you alright? What happened? I lean all my weight on the counter at that point, just letting my foot dangle as I hold it off the ground is painful. He fell down a ladder and landed on his foot wrong. What? But it's only now that it's really starting to hurt. I say it through gritted teeth. The pain is actually making me sweat, and I'm realizing that I might have done something more than just spraying it. I don't think I can walk like this. How did you fall down a ladder? He woke up in an attic here. Carl hunches down in front of me. My stupefied brain thinks it's a... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not my the time, Chase. My stupefied brain thinks of a butt sex joke, but I managed to keep it canned. You sure? I could just lean, uh, lean against you. That'll take too long. Besides, it looks, looks like you can't walk at all right now. This is why we established that he's fucking jacked under all that. Yeah, look at look how tight his like dress shirt's fitting. Yeah, they did not get him like the right size dress shirt. <laughs> it's for us. It's yeah, that is for us. Hesitantly, I let go of the counter and let myself sort of fall forward onto the ram's back. He's sturdy and barely budges as I lean all my weight onto him. Carl reaches back with both hands and hitches up my legs off the ground as he stands, and I feel all the muscles in my in his back flex as he does. Damn, Carl, you work out? 
Carl grunts. A little bit. I move my head to the side to keep from knocking my nose against his horns. Oh, that would be difficult. You think he could just center himself, basically? Yeah, he could just hide between the yeah. two. But then if he swings his head around, I'm like, Kunk. Kunk. <laughs> it's a smart move because just then Carl nods his head in Raven's direction. Basically, but, but he's shorter than us. So, like, how how is our head below where his horns would be? Is he shorter than us? I got that impression. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just kind of assume, like, Carl's proportions make me think he's go. shorter than us. But I just kind of picture an otter as being lanky. So I think that's maybe why I'm assuming this. Because we're not huge. I know we're not huge. We're not as tall as, like, Leo. Like, okay, so I think, I think in in terms of height. I think, I think, I think he is taller than us because he's, he's, yeah, okay. I, ty I typed Echo VN photo because I figured I'd get the photo from earlier. And yeah, Carl's in the back row. So he's, ta he's taller than us. Oh. Yeah, I knew, I knew like TJ and Jenna were the shortest. I thought that, yeah. like, I thought like Carl was going to be either our height or a little bit shorter. Yeah, in the, in the photo at the beginning for everyone that can't see it right now, but you could or whatever. Uh, the photo kind of looks like the five on a dice. With the top two dots being Carl and Leo, the middle one being uh, Chase, and the bottom two being uh, being TJ and and Jen, uh, Jenna, and then fucking Flynn's off on the side being I hate photos and all of you. Uh. <laughs> but he's de he's definitely like a, he's like half a head taller than us, maybe. I just think that like like because of the way I don't know for some reason I think. Maybe it's because of the way that this is angling him in terms of like the visual novel. Like I feel like he's also just wide, I'm like which making, makes him look shorter. He's like directly in the center of the screen. I don't know why I'm thinking because Leo looks so much taller than us. And if yeah, because he is. Carl doesn't look even remotely taller than us in terms of like where he is on the screen. They've already co they've even already commented on the size difference with Leo. Yeah, no, he's he's a big boy. But yeah, Carl's bigger than us, which means we're we're not very big. We're like a we're like a little bigger than TJ. Well, well, we were we were called adorable earlier. Adorable, so. adorable. Look at you! You're so adorable. As so, long as so we're, we're probably we're probably than shorter TJ. than Raven. No, I don't want to be shorter than Raven. <laughs> well, he's a dog, and we're Can an we be otter. The same height as Raven. I don't. The game. The game. The game is written. I know. <laughs> oh, I just, just don't like. You're gonna have to I mod like it this if you want to change the script. It's whatever. It's what's on the inside that counts. Uh, hey, I know this is kind of fucked up, but maybe grab a kitchen knife? Raven raises an eyebrow at Carl. Why? Raven, just fucking do it. I immediately see what Carl's getting at. We have no idea where we are or who put us here. It might be safe to be ready to defend ourselves, you know? And you said you saw something in the smoke. Raven's eyes widen, but he reaches out slowly to pull a knife from a, a silver-looking knife block. The husky frowns at the shing sound it makes. His ears down and elbows in, it's clear he's never used anything as a weapon before. Oh. But I can't blame him. Neither have I. Also, now we're introducing the idea of people having weapons on hand in a place where people could be hallucinating? We don't yeah, know what know, the nature of the thing is that happened. They say, like, statistically, having a knife on you makes it more likely you'll get stabbed. <laughs> Yes. So they say you shouldn't carry a knife around because it's actually more likely your assailant will know how to use it better than you do. Because most people that carry a knife have not used it against somebody else before. And if you give someone else a knife, they're going to use it against you. If, they're, if, they're, if you introduce a weapon to any situation, you, you are the statistically weapon, more likely for that weapon to end up in you. What is it? Uh, uh, it's like a Chekhov's gun situation. <laughs> you introduce a weapon. Self-inflicted, like, self-Chekhov's like, gun. Like this, uh, this knife's probably going to be used now because it's Chekhov's introduced. Russian roulette. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I should be the one to do it, though. Well, you're not strong enough to hold Chase, so I've got my hands tied. He looks back at me. If anything happens, though, I'll have to drop you and help him out. Okay, man? I chuckle softly. Yeah, no problem. Let's just hope that doesn't have to happen. And with the shaky husky in the lead, we set off back into the hallway. Immediately, it's clear that whatever uh, that wherever we are isn't very large. 
Four identical hallways lead us around in a perfect square. Oh, that's the worst. Each hallway has three doors on the right, one on the left, and a hatch in the ceiling that leads to the attic. I hate this. What also becomes immediately clear is that the door on the left leads to the kitchen. But the kitchen's only... The, the kitchen's... The kitchen there's only the one... <laughs> But from the kitchen, there's only that one door out. Each time we open the door to the kitchen, we come to realize that the angle in which we enter is the same. The first time this happens, we're mostly just confused, wondering if maybe we backtracked somehow. After the second time, though, Raven laughs. <laughs> this isn't real! <laughs> we're on drugs or something! But we're all seeing the same thing? Or I'm having this dream, and none of you are real, eh? The husky's voice is bordering on crazy. Some brain in a jar scenario. That paired with that paired with his grin, paired with him holding a knife, is slightly disconcerting. Oh, uh, uh, maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have given that guy the, the knife, huh? Carl huffs, hitching me up higher on his shoulders. All right, calm down. Just don't think about it. Let's try the other doors. I'm a little surprised at how well Carl is taking all of this. I wonder if part of it has to do with any of the weed that might still be in his system. That would help. We start trying the doors on the right, and this time things are different. The first door opens up to a wall, just an extension of the beige color of the wall surrounding it. That's creepy. We stare at it for a few moments, and for the first time I get a deep, unsettling terror in the pit of my stomach. I manage to keep it from rising to the surface, but... All this bizarre imagery combined with the surreal haze is making me feel sick and claustrophobic. Bummer. This is definitely not the way out. On to the next door. I don't know, just headbutt it to be safe. Yeah, now why don't you knock on it and see if it's hollow or something? <laughs> Carl chuckles again, and I feel myself clinging to his attempt at humor just to keep myself sane. The next door opens to up to what looks like a bathroom. It's definitely not a modern one, though, since it's complete with a pull chain from the high tank. Sure, you have to want to play a little game. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta reach into the into the tank, and there's a key yeah, and but a the, human head. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta sift through your which would be even your, weirder your now. Your parents' body parts to, <laughs> to find the the key. You have to find like a knife that you then use to cut your own ear off to find the key that I put inside your head. Your parents have been enjoying their long trip. <laughs> <laughs> Face your trauma. <laughs> well, at least we've got all the essentials, right? No, there's no food, Carl. <laughs> you have one essential. Period. The essential is Chase, the one you love. <laughs> the next door reveals a room full of tools and chains hanging from the ceiling, along with a, a sawhorse. The walls, though, are lined with wooden planks, and Carl gently sets me against the hallway wall before hurrying in and peering at the wood. Fuck. It's just concrete behind it. I don't bother to ask what the hell's going on again. I'm just starting to accept that we that where we are can't be explained. More doors are opened. Twelve in all. One is completely white and empty. Another contains a frilly bedroom, which is where Carl says he woke up. Further along, we come across what looks like an office along with a room decorated with sofas and a chandelier. When we reach one of the doors in the last hall, though, something's different. The first thing I notice is the smell. Though it's faint, I can tell it's sweet in the most disgusting way possible. Is there a body in there? Ah, what is that? Raven holds a hand up to his nose as we approach the second to last door in the last hall. This one is clearly damaged. The wood is splintered in the middle, bulging out slightly as if it had been punched from the other side. Hmm. Mm. It's not encouraging at all. Oh, wait. Ooh. Like something tried to break out. What if it, this is the? What if this is the door where Raven was burned alive? Like he died. Like there's some alternate reality Raven. It's a Raven freaking out in the other room was him knowing that there was another one of him in a different room trying to get out like, of like the, the real Raven did die somewhere else. The smell of his his roasted body. We all stare at it for a moment. The smell growing stronger. Then it hits me. Oh God! Do you think? I can't finish covering my muzzle with both hands. 
Raven, who had been right up next to the door, steps back with an arm up around his face, looking like he's about to throw up. I imagine the smell is a lot worse for him. Maybe we should skip this one for now. Carl hesitates, then gently sets me down against the wall again. We need to check every door. This could be the way out, you know? He looks back at me, but I don't say anything, just grimacing at the door. He holds out a hand to Raven. Knife. After handing it over, Raven takes several more steps back, further up the hall. I press my hands to my muzzle, readying myself to shut my eyes. As Carl turns the knob, I grit my teeth. The room has no illumination, therefore we have to rely on the light from the hallway to see inside. As the light from the opening, from the opening door spreads across the room, I see that it's rather simple. The walls are concrete, peppered with craters and rocks. The floor is smoother, but with webs of cracks in its surface. I can't see the ceiling, but I do see what's hanging from it. Once the door opens completely, there's enough light to fully take in what exactly it is. A noose, frayed and old-looking, but unmistakably a noose. Carl stares at it, then sticks his head in further to look back and forth, before stepping back to close the door. What was it? Raven calls from up the hall, his hands clasped nervously together. I noticed then the rotting smell's completely gone now, instead of getting stronger when Carl opened the door. Nothing. Empty room. I see Carl visibly trying to keep his breathing under control as he holds the knife out to Raven before bending down in front of me again. Really? Oh, thank God. Carl trembles as we step as he stands up with me in tow. As the husky moves to the final door, I lean in to check to, next to Carl's cheek. You okay? Did you see anything? He turns his head towards mine like an owl, <laughs> <laughs> no, touching his cheek to mine. Aside from the rope, no. What the f- what is happening? So we keep having doors that suggest something way worse is behind them, and then we open them and it's not there. And two of them, in, bo in both cases, is involved some version of, like, someone dying. Mm -hmm. And then it's, and then it's not there. <laughs> this, this, when I thought, when I, when I heard the disgusting, uh, disgusting sweet smell, I'm like, don't they usually say that when they're talking about, like, cooked human flesh is usually... I was thinking blood. And I was like, this, so I was thinking that, like, the person tried to escape the the room. I was also wondering, wondering if there was, like, a monster inside that, like, was trying to break out. And then, like, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of thing trying to break out scenarios where I'm like, I don't know if I want to open the door from this side. They really, Whatever was in there wanted to be on this side of the door. <laughs> Let's not. That's a good uh, point. That's a good is, point. Uh, well... This is getting pretty trippy.